Good morning. I'm John Pieper. I lead the development of the feedstock supply chain for DuPont's cellulosic ethanol plant, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment this morning on farmer acceptance, operations readiness, and soil sustainability as they relate to the development of that feedstock supply chain for that first cellulosic ethanol uh, biorefinery of DuPont's in Nevada, Iowa. Our plant will produce or will process some 375,000 ton of dry crop residue, uh, stover as we call it, to produce 30 million gallons of cellulosic ethanol annually. In this highly productive area of the U.S. grain belt, we're targeting at commercial scale the partial stover harvest of about 190,000 acres, about 25 percent of the total corn grown annually in a 30 mile radius of our plant, which into which we do expect our supply chain to settle. We designed our supply chain to start up around a service provider model, offering farmers in the area a contract to purchase their stover and provide collection and removal service. By providing us access to their residue blanketed fields following grain harvest, farmers can divest themselves of their problematic excess corn residue. Decades of university uh, studies focused on harvesting corn silage for cattle feed conclude that if otherwise protected from wind and water erosion, soil left undisturbed remains healthy through generations of total biomass removal in continuous corn production. Our innovative farmers in the areas understand that. And they trusted our hypotheses that was based on USDA general stover removal guidelines that in their cornfields, which produced 180 bushel of grain annually or more, we could remove two ton per acre of their residue. That level of removal would provide additional revenue reduce their tillage costs and their nitrogen requirements. And on that basis alone, most innovators were engaged by our third harvest. Their most often asked question was, when can I get all my corn acres enrolled? But the other 95% of farmers needed more convincing. Their reluctance to change comes honestly with weather and age. Studies indicate that up to 80% of corn crop yield variability is due to weather. And that massive weather effect makes it difficult for them to measure with surety the value of any changes they impose on their crop management systems, unless the results are highly negative or positive. I met one afternoon in uh, 2013 with a gentleman and two of his sons to discuss partial stover harvest in their operation. As we began, the father said, you know, I don't think we should be doing this, but the boys have a field of their own that they want to visit with you about. And he took a seat apart from the rest of us that were sitting to discuss this at their kitchen table. His comment was relating to the fact that farmers get only one turn a year, only 30 or 40 tries in their career at something new. And over his years, he had figured out how to make his operation work well. He farms more acres, and each acre is more productive than when he began. His residues, which on average have increased over 50% in direct proportion to his grain yields in the last 30 years, are increasingly problematic, but still managed effectively with tillage or crop rotation. And so with but a couple more crops to manage, he was feeling that this may just not be a good time for him to consider a change, especially if we couldn't provide him sufficient information and demonstration of value or enough revenue to overcome his calculation of risk. Well, we have successfully met each volume target as we grew our contracting from 2,500 acres in 2010 to 115,000 acres in 2014. However, we're only, we've only come about 60% of the way to full scale. And as was mentioned before, each new acre is a little tougher to get. 
There's much, there is yet much where continued research and policy support can help the industry in overcoming this initial reluctance many farmers have to accept partial stover harvest as their residue management practice. Central Iowa grain belt farmers are efficiently and effectively capitalized with labor and equipment to produce and harvest corn grain and soybean oil seed crops, but experience with or equipment for commercial biomass collection, if it ever existed in this area, exited as beef production largely consolidated and industrialized mostly outside of the area. Years of development on combines for grain harvesting that efficiently harvest that grain and voraciously process biomass in the small particles of waste leave us challenged to regather that material in a condition compatible to the biorefinery's use. We use stock shredders modified to capture the hit material as it's flailed into an auger, which deposits it in a windrow for the baler to get to pick up and package. Hay rakes will also work, and they deliver a higher harvest rate, especially when the combine has chopped it into those fine pieces. But they bring a much higher penalty for additional soil and foreign matter in our package product. Commercial balers designed to pick up long uniform strands of alfalfa hay struggle to pull in windrows of corn residue that are much more variable in size and length. This much less compressible plant material also often snaps the strongest available twine when the bales are first handled. And the diameter of that specially strengthened rope is not readily handled by the baler's tying mechanism. So we can experience a lot of problems in the field with bale breakage and repackaging. We appreciate the work that manufacturers have done to help us modify their balers without affecting their hay harvesting customers. But we really look forward to continued support so that we aren't decades away from machines that are specialized for our harvest. Several manufacturers also have prototypes or early releases on combination, combine, and balers, as Mark pointed out. But several manufacturers have prototype, or they treat corn as a bio, as a co-product, biomass co-product, rather than a waste material, packaging it before it ever hits the ground. And therefore, it's the cleanest material we can harvest. But because the corn stalk has not been broken and exposed to dry air for a period, especially in early harvest or when harvesting early for the maturity of the hybrid, moisture levels are high in the baled products. And with moisture and warmth, nature's bacteria consume carbohydrates in the cellulose and hemicellulose before we get a chance to feed them to the bacteria in our biorefinery. And so managing cover for water protection from above and preventing the wicking of water through the ground below in storage are critical issues for us, as well as lightning strikes or the management of any fire of any origin remains a significant bane for our industry in today's, that has no acceptable solutions in today's harvesting of biomass. Quality measurement tools that give instantaneous readings of moisture and form material as residue is baled would help us more quickly refine our harvesting processes. And those same tools would help us receive that material at the plant and more uh, readily direct it through pre-processing. But those are not commercially available today. Yet by owning the equipment in our supply chain and managing the operators who run it, and with tremendous assistance from Iowa State University's Ag and Biosystems Engineering, we have improved our cost efficiency over 50% in field operations by using the electronic gathering of operational data and manual gathering and data analysis of quality parameters. Soil sustainability is a strength in our supply chain. Under a memorandum of understanding with the USDA, we work with the Iowa Natural Resources Conservation Service using their soil health modeling tools in software designed with the help of Idaho National Labs and Ag Solver to deliver soil health plans to each of our contracted farmers. These plans predict the topsoil, organic carbon, and general soil health change across soil types, given inputs such as crop yield, stover removal, 
tillage and other application passes in each harvested field. In end of season reviews, we help farmers to understand specific operational changes that will enhance the long-term health of their soils. We are also positioned with these tools to decline contracting of fields where farmers are unwilling or otherwise unable to maintain soil health. Farmers find that with our partial stover harvest, their fields in spring have average residue cover, lower nitrogen requirement, and reduced pathogen load, very similar to those fields that are operated with a crop rotation to soybeans. They also observe more uniform residue coverage across the fields and enjoy fuel, equipment, and labor savings from eliminating at least the aggressive deep fall tillage pass and increased yields from earlier planting into warmer, drier soils with more quickly and uniformly emergence of their crop. They trust our soil health plans because they know they're designed and developed in partnership with the NRCS, one of their trusted partners. They know that we randomly audit their fields annually and that the NRCS trains and audits our personnel and our process to assure that we're following well-developed and practiced processes of planning and measurement. The question most often asked by a farmer in the soil health plan review is, would you provide a plan on the remainder of my fields that aren't in your harvest? Farmers see these as so valuable that we've begun to use them as part of our selling tools to get growers enrolled. However, the current level of sophistication of the underlying integrated computer programs, coupled with ongoing development of our own harvest operation management systems, make it difficult and costly to maintain as each is adjusted on an annual basis. And our field audit process, verifying practices and results through physical field cover and erosion measurements, is labor intensive each spring, greatly limiting our opportunity to expand and improve the program, regardless of requests from growers. Additional research to demonstrate and document how, not if, stover harvest can be integrated into crop residue management practices on every farm and every field and each soil type in a sustainable manner is a valuable opportunity before us. It's been an interesting experience for an old farm boy who made a few bales of corn uh, stover back in the day and even stacked some to be gathering and packaging some 200 to 300,000 bales in a 70 day window during which we get to operate our equipment 28 to 32 days on average. And to, and to understand that we're only about 30 to 45 percent of full scale at that level. In the broader sense, policy that supports soil conservation will support cellulosic ethanol. Partial stover harvest is a pathway to reduce tillage, saving farmers expensive fuel consuming aggressive deep fall tillage. It's a path to no-till, ending the destruction of soil structure and microsystems. And it's a path to cover crops, the ultimate soil building cropping system which takes advantage of available spring and fall sunlight to generate additional root mass which allows microbial bacteria, fungi, and earthworms to flourish. And that's what builds soil organic matter and long term is beneficial to overall soil structure and health. The cellulosic industry is a great opportunity for production agriculture. Management of residue by removal is a strategy that can allow corn yields to reach genetic potentials. It's the way we will all farm one day. Let's work together to make that day soon.